It's been a great regular season, and we're here in the 2023 Stanley Cup playoffs. It's been a long year. It's been a great year. And this year we have some newcomers in the fray for the quest for the Stanley Cup, and that's great to see. We always love some new blood and not the old guard all the time. No Pittsburgh, no Washington. What kind of world are we living in? We shall see. All right, so. Not all of these matchups have been finalized yet as of today, the 14th of April. There are still two matches left uncertain and those are on the left here with the Colorado and Dallas series being uncertain. We'll see if Colorado can get first in the division and in their own interests. I think they would hope to win this. So today we're going to be previewing the first series of the playoffs and we're going to start with Edmonton and LA. So a rematch of last year should be a fun one. As for the rest of these previews, we will disperse them throughout the weekend into Monday. And we will also be doing the playoff bracket, the NHL playoff bracket challenge sometime during the weekend probably. And we'll discuss more about our predictions when that happens. So let's get started with... The preview. So game one is on Monday, April 17th in Edmonton at likely 8 p.m. Mountain Time. That's not sure yet, so don't take my word for it. We shall see when the times get announced for sure. But it's definitely on Monday. So let's start with the Edmonton Oilers, who are 50, 23, and 9 on the year. 109 points which is a little better than last year, which is a good thing, a good improvement. And you can, you can definitely see that in their play recently. They have scored 325 goals on the year, which is first in the league, and they have allowed 256, which is 17th. Their top six skaters, Ryan Eugene Hopkins, Carter McDavid, Zach Hyman, Evander Kane, Leon Dreisaitl, Kaylor Yamamoto, Great top six there. Their top four defense, Darnell and Nurse, Cody Ceci, Matthias Ekholm, and Evan Bouchard. And their goalies, big change from last year, right? No more Smith, no more Koskinen. This year, it's Stuart Skinner, 29-14-5, and 2.75 goals in this direction, and a 9-14 save percentage. And Jack Campbell, 21-9-4, and 3.41 goals in this direction. 888 save percentage. Not sure who's going to start game one. I'm going to expect Skinner, but Jack Campbell also has that experience. So maybe they'll go with him. Maybe a short leash for Skinner. Power play for Edmonton, obviously first in the league, 32.4%. Penalty killing 77% and 20th in the league. And the season series between these two teams was a draw in which the Kings scored one more goal than the Oilers. For the LA Kings side of things, 47, 25, and 10 on the year, 104 points. They scored 274 goals this year and they allowed 254. Their top six skaters, Gwyn Byfield, Andre Kopitar, Adrian Kempe, Trevor Moore, Philip Dano, Victor Arvidsson. And their top four defense, Mikey Anderson, Drew Doughty, Vladislav Gavrikov, and Matt Roy. Their goalies, another overhaul. Jonathan Quick is gone. So a big change in the goaltending spectrum. And Corpus Salo has been great. 7-3-1 on the year. 2.13 goals since the average 921 save percentage. Phoenix Copley, who has played a lot of games down the stretch. 24-6-3, 2.64 goals in the average, 9 with 3 save percentage. I know Copley's done a great job this year in terms of his record at least, but I have to think that Corpus Salo will be starting game one because 
of experience, I would think, and how good he has been for the Kings down the stretch. Their power play, 25.3%, fourth in the league. Penalty killing, 75.8%, and 24th. And as I said, the season's series was tied. So, let's talk about some storylines here between before we get to our prediction. So, obviously, there's going to be a lot of attention on the Edmonton Oilers because they have McDavid and Dreisaitl and Zach Hyman, Ryan Nugent Hopkins over 100 points this year. They have a very top-heavy forward group, as we all know they have for the last few years. But this year feels a little different because of, I think, their goaltending and their defense with the addition of Matthias Ekholm. I think that's a definite improvement from last year in which they did get to the third round but could not win a game against a very skilled Colorado Avalanche group. Now, for the Kings, I definitely will say they also have improved from last year. Last year, they basically squeaked in in the playoffs and no one really picked them to win. There's this dumb kid that picked him to win last year and that was me. And that was the only prediction I got wrong in round one last year. So this year, I'm not sure if I'll, uh, uh, if I'll make that same mistake again, but the Kings have definitely gotten better. And it's mostly their goaltending as well. And Jonas Corposalo, Phoenix Copley, definitely feels like an improvement over Jonathan Quick, who's in Vegas now, and Al Peterson, who is in their minor affiliate at this point. Now, obviously the main story is Connor David, 153 points this year. Yeah, is anyone going to stop him? Probably not. But what's missing from an Edmonton Oilers group is team success, and they definitely need the depth to chip in this time as well. Can't do it on his own, as we've seen in previous years. Now, I've always thought of Los Angeles as more of a defensive-oriented team, but it doesn't seem like that this year. And they have allowed almost as many goals as Edmonton, which I don't think spells good news for them, even though they have allowed less. I really don't know. I feel like the talent gap here is still a little bit large. The Kings have a very young core and the old guard and Kopitar and Dowdy are slowly fading away. They're still very relevant, but they're mostly a younger team now. I feel like their experience is still a little bit lacking here to really give Edmonton a run for their money. And Edmonton, I think, is poised to win the playoffs, maybe the cup this year. I think it's the best chance they've ever had, to be honest. So... I think we'll see what happens here. All right, so let's take a look at some of the stats for the players now very quickly. So obviously for the Oilers, McDavid and Dreisaitl dominating the league in their points. And Newton Hopkins, over 100 points, so great to see that. Some depth scoring. Well, Newton Hopkins isn't really depth, but great to see Newton Hopkins finally come into his own a little bit. And then for the Los Angeles Kings, um, some good point totals here from Kopitar, Friala, and Adrian Kempe. Obviously, no one is, is above a point a game, but that's not really what we expect from the LA Kings. And now for my prediction, it's going to be the Oilers in six games. I do think the Los Angeles Kings will give the Oilers a bit of a challenge here, but Nothing substantial, in my opinion. It might even be five, in my opinion. Because I do think the Oilers have gotten a bit better this year. And that's not to say the Los Angeles Kings haven't gotten better either. And last year, they did take the Edmonton Oilers to seven games. But I do think that Edmonton's goaltending was the main issue in their playoff success. 
in previous years. So I do think Edmonton will have a little bit of an easier time now. I think the X factor for the LA Kings, if they have a chance of winning this, will be Corpus Allo and how good he plays. If they can stifle the Edmonton Oilers' offense, maybe the Kings have a path to victory. But I don't think it's that huge of a chance. But we shall see. All right, that's going to be it for my preview here for these two teams. We will continue with more previews uh, in a, throughout the weekend. And maybe on Monday if we need to. So stay tuned. There's a lot more hockey content coming up in these next few days. So let me know who you think is going to win this series in the comment section down below. Give us some reasons why you think that. And let me know if you're excited for this year's Stanley Cup playoffs. All right, so that's going to be about it. So see you next time. See you later and take care.